This Christmas, there's a message from God saying, I've got something for you today. I've got something for you today. I want to help you with what you have. Now, some, some of you may need salvation. The Lord says, I not only want to restore what you've lost, I want to restore you. I want to restore your heart. I want to restore your confidence. I want to restore your joy, your peace. I want to make an example out of your life so that other people can say, that's what I want God to do in my life. One word from God can change your life forever. Hello, Jerry Dearman here. Welcome to Solid Life. I don't know about you, but I love the Christmas season. And we are here in this amazing season to celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus. And today I've got a message for you called A Meaningful Christmas. So open your heart to receive and I'll be back at the conclusion to pray with you. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, reading loudly and together, let's read. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. We can, you can stop reading. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. I want to give you three points today. And number one is this, listen to the Christmas story for yourself. Listen to the Christmas story for yourself. Number two, experience Jesus for yourself. Experience Jesus for yourself. And number three, help others hear about and experience Jesus. Help others hear about and experience Jesus. Let's talk about this first one. Listen to the Christmas story for yourself. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Here's something I didn't catch before. God sent angels. You know in the Greek, the word angel, it means messenger. So God has created these messengers, many messengers, angels, and he sent some of these messengers to these shepherds. Think about it. Not to the king not to the rulers, the religious rulers, to the shepherds. I mean, these lowly people out in the fields, they don't have the jobs or the, the occupations of high esteem. But notice, very intentionally, God is saying, no, I, I want the common person out there to know that this is a big deal. And so the angels come, and, and here's the message. Behold, I bring you, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Look at this, I bring you, who? The shepherds. I bring you, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And then he says this, which will be for all people. It, this is going to come to all people, but right now, I'm talking to you. Sometimes we can think of Christmas, and especially in a church context, as an opportunity, because we talk about that, an opportunity to bring people, to win people to Jesus and everything. But I want you to notice, these angels from God Almighty were sent to these shepherds and says, no, first we're bringing it to you. And I want to tell you today, Christmas is not just through you. Christmas is to you. Christmas is to you. This Christmas, this Christmas, this year, there's a messenger sent. Of course, Jesus is the primary messenger. But I'm a messenger today sent to tell you that Jesus came to love and minister to you, to bring you good news about your life, 
about how much God loves you, about how much God cares about you, about how much God wants to help you with what you're going through in your life. I don't know what exactly each of you are going through, but I know this, everybody has something weighing on you. Everyone has a challenge that they're facing. And I want you to know the the Christmas message to you, number one, like to these shepherds, behold, I bring you some good tidings of great joy. In other words, you are gonna be so excited when this baby grows up and does what he's gonna do. Well, thank God he's already grown up and done what he came to do, isn't that right? But he said, you're gonna be so excited because he came to make changes in your life that you can't make and no one else can make for you. I came to bring you good news, these angels said. But what I love about this is they said, which will be to all people. In other words, yeah, this is gonna go to everybody else too, but right now, God wanted us to bring this to you and say, this is a good news for you. I don't know what's going on with you today, but I know this, this Christmas, there's a message from God saying, I've got something for you today. I've got something for you today. I wanna help you with what you have. Now, some some of you may need salvation. You need the blood of Jesus to cleanse your sins away because you don't have eternal life if he hasn't. You need that. The good news is, that's why he came. Listen to John 3, 16 from the Amplified Bible. I don't always use the Amplified, but I just love the way this read. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten, unique son so that whoever believes in trusts in, clings to, relies on him, should not perish or shall not perish, come to destruction, be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. Don't you like that? Man, I mean, Jesus came to fix it all, to fix it all, to fix your eternity. So if you need salvation, but it's more than just salvation. Jesus said, I have come in order that you might have life Life in all its fullness, John 10, 10 from the Good News Bible. I've come that you might have life in all its fullness. Jesus also said in Luke 4, 18 and 19, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has appointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to announce that captives shall be released and the blind shall see that the downtrodden shall be freed from their oppressors and that God is ready to give blessings to all who come to him. Praise God. God is ready to give blessings to all who come to him. Jesus didn't come to bring bad news. Jesus came to bring good news, didn't he? Jesus didn't come to cause problems. Jesus came to solve the problems that we human beings already have, starting with sin, starting with Satan, the devil, starting with fear, and sickness, disease, addictions, bondages, emotional disorders, mental disorders, poverty, and the like. I remember when I was 18 years old and I was raised in church, thank God for my upbringing. Raised in church, raised by sincere parents who loved the Lord, thank God. But I found myself coming out of high school bound with lust. Man, all that perverted talk in the locker rooms and everything, I mean, I, and before you know it, it gets down in your heart. And even though I loved the Lord, went to church, wanted to be saved, wanted to serve Jesus, before you know it, you're telling those perverse jokes, you know, because they just come to mind and you're, they're funny and you're saying it. Oh, double meaning, innuendos and all of that. You're doing that. Before you know it, man, you're bound. And I was bound. I was bound. So I got, I got out of high school and I was bound with lust. I thank God that we didn't have the internet back then. No, I'm serious. Boy, things weren't just a click away. You know, you had to go through a process back then if you wanted to get a hold of anything. Thank God I I didn't have all of that temptation. What, What many of you are dealing with today, oh, dear Lord, God bless you. But let me tell you, there's hope. There's hope. There's hope. See, I began to seek the Lord like crazy, and I I heard some preaching of the word of God that convinced me that because I was born again, even though I had a sin problem, even though I had a flesh problem, even though I had a mind problem, 
My mind was carnal. My flesh was walking in sin and lust and bound. But even though I had that problem, because in my spirit I was making Jesus Lord and confessing sin and calling out to him, some preaching of the word of God taught me that he made, God made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us that I might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. And the preaching came with such clarity and power. Oh, it slammed into my heart. I'll never forget it. Just cut me, cut me to the heart to, to see in the Bible that a person like me that was struggling with sin had hope because Jesus had already died for all of that sin, past, present, and future. And, and that he took his righteousness. You know, he was born sinless, and then he resisted temptation his whole life on earth and did not sin, and then took our sin and died with it. But he had righteousness. He was declared righteous because he endured temptation and refused to sin. He took his righteousness and handed it to us as a free gift. We didn't earn it. We couldn't do anything to get it. We can't do anything to keep it. But see, this gospel of what Jesus did in the great exchange, taking my sin and handing me freely his righteousness that he earned, that I could not earn, and I realized from the preaching of the word that I, the born-again spirit inside, am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So even though my flesh is having trouble, my mind's having trouble, inside, God looks at me and he sees a righteous man, a man of God. Oh, that just slammed into me so deeply. Here, 30 years later, it brings tears to my eyes because I remember the bondage I remember the paralysis of my life, of failure going somewhere to happen because of the guilt and the shame. And then to hear that gospel that cuts you to the heart and you know, oh, he loves me. Oh, he cares about me. Oh, oh, he forgave me. I'm righteous inside, even though I'm still struggling on the outside, see? And when I latched on to that revelation that truth of what Jesus did and began to see myself like that and began to walk around my bedroom and say, I'm a man of God. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for me that I might become the righteousness of God in Christ. And as a teenager, as a teenager, quoting 2 Corinthians 5, 21 over and over and over and personalizing it, along with other passages, John 8, 31 and 32, uh, which says, if you abide in my word, you'll be my disciples indeed. You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Just meditating, meditating, declaring those things. Those truths became real to me. I believed them, even though my life didn't show them. And what happened was, because I latched on to that gospel, that good news of what Jesus did, it delivered me from bondage. It delivered me from lust. I knew who I was. I knew, see, I knew, I knew. And since that time, I've had a passion to help other people to get free from bondage. And I, I know we've helped thousands of people get delivered just with the truths that are in OSL and such, that truth about righteousness, that truth of the great exchange, that truth of righteousness consciousness and such. See, these things are in the Bible. But when you hear these truths, they bypass the intellect and they go down in your heart and they make you free. They deliver you. The power of the gospel delivers people from bondage and sin unto salvation. The Christmas season is a time to be reminded that Jesus came so we could receive his love and his salvation and share that love with others. As we approach the beginning of a new year, Jerry Dearman would like to encourage you by giving you a special free audio series. It's titled, Seeing Your Word Come to Pass, which is designed to encourage you and show you how you can see not only God's promises come to pass in your life, but also how to discern what God has said to you for this coming new year. You can download this exciting series absolutely free by visiting jerrydearman.com 
or you can receive the six CD version of this groundbreaking series for your gift of $35 by calling 1-800-544-8000 or by visiting the online store at jerrydearman.com. And as you prepare for the new year, it's a perfect time to focus on God and to allow God to give you a fresh start for this new year. And we can't think of a better way to do that than with our OSL Online Discipleship System. This program is also free at jerrydearman.com. Just click on OSL Online. Thousands have already been changed by Operation Solid Lives because it fills you with the Word of God so you can develop a deeper relationship with God and more clearly discern what God is saying to you. Your life can be absolutely changed by the Word of God in the coming new year. Visit jerrydearman.com or call 1-800-544-8000 today to receive these life-changing resources. I don't know what's happening with you this Christmas season, but let me just tell you quickly. First, receive the Christmas gospel that there's a Savior who came to take care of whatever it is you're going through for yourself. Receive it for yourself. When you receive it for yourself and then you're talking to another human being, not in a preachy way, but just in a relational way, and you're conveying your testimony and, and what's happened in your life, it relates to them. Think about this. That which is most personal is also most general. In other words, when you get right down to your person on the inside and what you were dealing with and what Jesus did to change you that really made an impact on you, when you share that, that's what really relates to the other person because down at the core, we're all alike. We're human beings with spirit, soul, and body. Some of us have born-again spirits. Others don't. But when you begin to relate down with feelings and emotions and struggles and fears and such, when you allow yourself to get that personal, it's, it's more general. It relates to more people because everybody has that kind of stuff down on the inside. And think about this. Every once in a while, I think about it. Today, we have over 7 billion people on the planet. Over 3 billion people have never heard a, a clear gospel message and a billion and a half people have never even heard the name Jesus one time. Haven't even heard it. And some estimate that there may be one billion that are truly born again on the planet. And think about this. Out of over seven billion people, how is it that the gospel of Jesus Christ somehow came to your ears and heart in a way that you believed it, received the Lord Jesus, and now you, as one of the minority, have eternal life. What if you were born in a place where you didn't hear? Just that concept alone should make us feel so blessed, so blessed. The loving God, somehow, some way was able to get this first message from these angels to the shepherds, was able to get it all the way a couple of thousand years later on the other side of the world to us so that we could be saved, so that we could have life in the Lord Jesus. See, this is precious. Here's what I believe, and I think you'll believe it too. If you really believe that Jesus is the only answer, that he's the only way, you'll tell people. If you really believe that the people that are not born again will not make it to heaven, but they'll go to hell eternally and suffer without Jesus, you'll make it known. Somehow or another, we kind of believe it sometimes, but we, we believe that it's possibly not true enough to risk our reputations on this, to risk our reputations. But these shepherds, don't you love them? Man, they just made it widely known. And this is what Jesus told us to do. Go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He's the only way. And then let me give you one more scripture from 2 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, that, so that we could be made right with God 
through Christ. Through Christ. How can we make him widely known? Well, of course, we can just share the gospel with people. Just tell them about Jesus. Tell them what Christmas means. That's one way. Here's another way that we have an opportunity is with our Christmas services. Now, let me just close. I want to show you uh, three pictures. Let me show you this first one of this owl. Look at this owl. And I want to show you that because I'm relating this to inviting people to church. And, and <laughs> you're like the owl. <laughs> and the people that you're inviting are like the unsuspecting mouse. And you're just going to come and latch your talons into them. No, no, no. That's not the point. Here's, that's not the point. That's not the point. Here's the point. The point is really the photographer. If the photographer did not push the button right then, a second later it would have been gone. You missed it. You missed it. What I'm talking about is timing. Timings. Taking a photograph at the right time catches something that thousands and thousands and thousands of people will look at. Otherwise, nobody would have looked at all you see is the tip of an owl's wings and you missed it. Right? Look at this next shot. Timing. <laughs> you think that guy's surprised? <laughs> he, he didn't even have a chance to get mad yet. He's just, he's scared. He's scared. Timing. How many of you know if the photographer did not push the button at the right time, we would, nobody would want to see that shot of just a man with a funny face, right? Nobody wants to see that, right? Let me show you one more. Ready? Look at this. That one takes a second look, doesn't it? <laughs> What's going on there? It's just the angle, and it's just the timing, the way the dog turned his head and such. It's just timing. Listen, here's the point. We've got two weeks. I would say it's likely that there are people that the Lord wants us to invite, and if they don't get saved this Christmas, it's over. Wouldn't you say that? Because people are dying every day. And so this is not to guilt us into it. Man, we're so dependent on the Lord. We can't do anything to help people except be a messenger and to make it known and to trust the Holy Spirit to touch their hearts. Okay, so here's what we're talking about. We're talking about this amazing season of the year called Christmas. And during the Christmas season, this whole month of December, people are more willing to go to church than at any other time of the year. So people that you think may reject you if you invite them all year long for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the Christmas carols at the mall or just the whole spirit of the season, but for whatever reason, people are willing to go to church. And so I want to encourage you, whatever church you attend, if you don't attend, start attending a church. This is what God has called all believers to do. But let's pray right now that God will give us the boldness and that the Holy Spirit will lead us to invite just the right neighbors or colleagues or uh, other students at school to come to church with us this Christmas season and just trust that the Holy Spirit will tug on their heart when you bring the invitation. And so, Father, we come in Jesus' name. We pray that you would use us as instruments to lead people to come to church so that they can hear the good news about Jesus, so that they can be saved and be welcomed into a church family, hopefully. Lord, lead us by your spirit, but certainly, Lord, by your power, tug on people's hearts so that as we give the invitation or afterward, that they'll just think inside, you know, I need to do it, or my family and I needs to go to church. Lord, do your work as we do ours in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And by the way, we're also preparing for the new year. And going into the new year, we're always thinking, okay, what's, what does God want to do in my life this year? Well, some time ago, I taught this series called Seeing Your Word Come to Pass. This is not so much just talking about the Word of God come to pass. Yes, that's important. But what about your word? What about what God has said to you? I would love to give you this series absolutely free. If you'll just go to our website, jerrydearman.com, and you'll click on the link that looks just like this graphic, you can download this entire series absolutely free. I believe it'll really warm your heart and prepare you to believe God for a great year 
in 2017. And for those of you that would like the hard copy, you can call that number on your screen, 1-800-544-8000. And don't forget to set your DVR so that you never miss our broadcast. It'll always be available to you on your screens. Well, I've enjoyed being with you today. Stay tuned for some important messages. And I hope to see you next time. God bless you and Merry Christmas. The Christmas season is a time to be reminded that Jesus came so we could receive his love and his salvation and share that love with others. As we approach the beginning of a new year, Jerry Dearman would like to encourage you by giving you a special free audio series. It's titled, Seeing Your Word Come to Pass, which is designed to encourage you and show you how you can see not only God's promises come to pass in your life, but also how to discern what God has said to you for this coming new year. You can download this exciting series absolutely free by visiting jerrydearman.com or you can receive the six CD version of this groundbreaking series for your gift of $35 by calling 1-800-544-8000 or by visiting the online store at jerrydearman.com. And as you prepare for the new year, it's a perfect time to focus on God and to allow God to give you a fresh start for this new year. And we can't think of a better way to do that than with our OSL Online Discipleship System. This program is also free at jerrydearman.com. Just click on OSL Online. Thousands have already been changed by Operation Solid Lives because it fills you with the Word of God so you can develop a deeper relationship with God and more clearly discern what God is saying to you. Your life can be absolutely changed by the Word of God in the coming new year. Visit jerrydearman.com or call 1-800-544-8000 today to receive these life-changing resources. Solid Life with Jerry Dearman is made possible by the generous gifts of those who have joined hands with us to take the message of Jesus Christ around the world. Jerry Dearman Ministries is building solid lives around the globe through the life-transforming power of the Word of God by discipling people in every nation. For more information about Jerry Dearman Ministries or one of The Rock's many campuses around the country, please go to jerrydearman.com. Write to us at P.O. Box 4970, Anaheim, California 92803 or call us at 1-800-544-8000.